Hi, my name is Phyllis Y. Whitley. If you have been spiritually victimized and traumatized, welcome to Spiritology Live, where I bring my number one Amazon bestseller author book to life. Each episode would be a spiritual, metaphysical, holistic space of consciousness where you will learn to break your religious shackles within and live in your promised land today. Let's go. Hi, everybody. Yes, 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 yes. If y'all have not caught up, please go back and get the episode. I'm on everyone, Spotify, FM, iHeart, I'm on Amazon Music. I'm on everywhere. I'm telling you, I'm going to do some classes on to just help y'all get through. I mean, put it, put it in. If you have a question, please put it in the review. We talked about, I'm going to recap real quick. We talked about, I had a part one and I had a part two. And that literally was about the re, how to prune the rebellious seed. And I had to continue because I was touching bases with politics, Hollywood, whatever. And I was trying to make it, squeeze it in. And some of y'all say, oh my goodness, you know, you just, you, you, you gave me just a little bit of the icing. I don't think you gave me any dessert. I gave you dessert. You just didn't want to believe you was getting the dessert. Now, if you're not satisfied with the dessert, that's why you have to go get my book. You know, you can go get my book. It's all also available. I don't think I said it. It's um, on Audible, Amazon Audible, for those of you who say, I just don't have time to read. With that being said, we discussed a rebellious seed. What is a rebellious seed? It's planted. It's, it was put in the ground way before you was born. And how do you know the belt rebellious seed? It comes, like I said, I hate to keep going back, but I'm going to let you go back. There's a lot of scriptures on it. It comes to destroy a nation. It comes to destroy you as the head of the household. Then you destroy your family. Then you destroy your neighborhood. And then you destroy your community. And then the community is destroyed. And then your state is destroyed. And then it goes and spread around other states. Do you understand what I'm saying? The rebellious seed is those negative words. That negative spirit that goes from generation to generation, from two generations to stop you from receiving your promised land. It's in the greatest book ever. Well, I mean, I don't do so and so and so and so and so. I don't care what religion you are, but if you're spiritual minded, that's why my book was called Spiritology. You want to know how to get to your promised land. And the thing about it, because it's, everything is Christian based, I've seen other religion. I've been in other religion. And I'm going to be honest with you, they know how to meditate. And I think the shameful part of it is that church goers, and I say church goers, they go to hear a couple scriptures and they feel they did do diligence because I went to church today. I went to church Wednesday and I went to church Saturday. And then they come home and they didn't learn nothing. They don't even know nothing about the scripture. They probably know the Lord's prayer. What are you teaching your kids? What are you teaching your environment, your community? Also your community starting with your job. You do not have to take the manuscript and stand on a corner. I'm not asking you to take this manuscript and then put it on your desk. If anything, don't put it on social media because you know, good quotes, Good poetry, you can express the good, the good part, the good news, which is the gospel, through your action. People are always looking at you. Don't think that your people at your job, your co workers, whatever, and you, they watching everybody. So don't just think the whole world looking at you. I don't want you to be walking around with your head turned around. What I'm saying is live your life to the fullest, specialize in something. You know, I, I read a book called Outwitting the Devil. By Napoleon Hill. If you want to go get that book, you better go get that book. Listen to it. And I'm going to tell you right there, he talked about, he's literally having an interview with the devil. It's like an interview with the vampire. And and the enemy is telling him things, whether you believe it or not, about what do he attack. And one of the things is he wants everybody's mind to stay idle. I'll probably discuss that in my next episode. But with that being said, it's the same as the rebellious seed. The rebellious seed wants you to stay idle. It wants your brain, you, it wants you to be brain dead. That seed, things can enter into your subconscious mind, your being, your spiritual, your spirit through your ear gates of your eyes, your ears. I discuss all of that in the book. And what happens is it goes through people. 
I just did a book called Bullying and that bullying seed. Yes, I already discussed it. Nobody wakes up and say, oh, I'm four years old and I'm going to go and I'm going to beat somebody up. You heard it from your parents. You seen them watch TV and they talked about a particular culture, a race. Yes, I'm not here to tell you who you're supposed to like. But if you judge the book by its cover, shouldn't people judge you? What makes you so superior because your book cover, somebody lied and told you you had the best book cover? It's an illusion. Do you understand? We are talking about how to replace your illusion with the truth. The truth is in the manuscript. But if you don't read the truth and you don't go and you say, hey, I just don't believe in God. You ain't got to believe in God because God believes in you. You ever was looked at someone who say, um, I'm an atheist and and they just making it. And, you know, in the church, they said, well, you know, they making it because the devil helping them. Don't believe that mess. Please don't believe that mess. Because they believe in God. I'm going to tell you a secret. They believe in God more than the average person going to church because you know why? Believing in God ain't just because you're walking into a church and you you got a spiritual leader. Believing in God is believing in yourself. When you have kids and you look at your kids, how would you feel if one of your child said, I just hate myself. I want to die, mom or dad. I just don't like nothing about me. You're going to be looking like, oh my God, little Johnny hates himself. Little Sally or Tamika, they don't like themselves. What did I do wrong? Then you got that child that's going to look up and say, I love life. I love myself. Thank you. I'm so happy, mom. I'm so happy, dad. And they might have just two nipples to scratch. It's going to make you feel good as a parent. It should. How do you think God feels when you create life? When you multiply the seeds that he told you to, to multiply? He sat back and he said, hey, I got a reward for you. And it's called the promised land. Do you understand? An atheist probably know God more than you because when he believe in himself, when he have the confidence in himself, he don't know that it's a spiritual side of him. And that spiritual side is saying thank you because he love who he is. And not on the, he don't even know that he's really loving the creator because he loved the creation. And see, people go to church, they sit up there and all they want to do is beg God. And this is the people who go into a spiritual leader that is upside down and got their rebellious seed. This is not your pastor. So please don't write me letters. My pastor is the best. My pastor is this. My pastor is that. Remember, he's your pastor, but he's not your God. Do you understand? Hello, hello, hello. I'm going to say hello, hello, because I'm trying to tap on your subconscious mind so you can get it. Yes, I'm still here. I'm just trying to digest and see what, what, what I'm going to do because I can feel some of y'all saying, I mean, you talking about an atheist. Also. Look at some of the people around you. If you go to your job, do a survey, you might be surprised how many people say, I don't believe in God. And, you know, then you look at all the church people, the ones who got the Bible up, propped up on the desk, they got it in the back of their car seat and they don't even read it. Well, you saying that you're not supposed to idle Let me tell you, if you feel like you want to go ahead and you want to advertise, just remember, once you advertise, you just put a target on your back that people are going to say, oh, you know, they are Christian. How do you know? They got a Bible in the back of their car. They got a Bible and they're going to be looking at you in the next minute. You, next week come and you going through something and they going through something and they see you out there cursing out the mailman and everything or blessing them out or whatever you want to do and not really cursing them out because you're going to bless them out and it's simple and nice and you know and they say what oh you know if they can do it I can do it why do you think that stars co go to jail and come out I'm a Christian I think it was one actress and I'm not going to say her name and she said she was a Christian and they the talk show host asked her something about what's her favorite scripture and she didn't even know. You know why people put that out there, especially on social media? Because a lot of them are going through the back door, living like the devil, but they want God to bless their mess. God, I went and got this boyfriend that I want you to bless. I want this to be my king, my husband. So what I'm going to do, all of a sudden, you know God. All of a sudden, you know God. Because you want God to bless that. No, 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 no. Did you know God before you went and got that left-footed, crazy, narcissistic man? Didn't you say, God, could you fix him? Stop trying to fix the rebellious seed. The only thing you can do is prune that seed inside you. How do you do it? Go back to the farmer. 
He waters the seed. The seed got sunlight. It's in my book. You got to explain that to me, Miss P. Okay, I'm going to do it. Watering your seed. What are you watering? What are you feeding it? That's the same as feeding. You know, people water the plant, feed the plant. What are you feeding? It's just like the spirit of gluttony. That's a rebellious spirit. Nobody going to talk about that. I was in the church with a great, 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 great man of God who holistically, he went around everything, finances, your body, and have the people who left the church because they don't want to know about gluttony. Nobody want to know. I'm a Christian. God loved me and I love him. I don't want to know nothing about why my body is 500 pounds, why I got diabetes and high blood pressure. Don't be going. They don't want you to go in their kitchen. But let me tell you something holistic. That's what my, my show is about. Holistic. I consult. I counsel people holistically because I deal with your body, mind, and soul. Everything is connected. You got to water that seed. You got to feed that seed because guess what's going to come up from the ground? Did he not say in that scripture, Isaiah 14, 12? Let's just change the Lucifer to the rebellious seed. Said a rebellious seed will cut down. He said how you are cut down to the ground. That's where the seed, that's us. That's the earth. You, I don't believe. I mean, you trying to say you acting like I'm a plant. You acting like, let me tell you something. Do you not need water to live? Do you not need to go ahead and clean yourself every day with water? Hello? Stop eating. And what happened if you don't feed yourself? Do you understand it's a metaphor? What happens in the physical is happening in the spiritual, but it already happened in the spiritual realm. I'm not going to sit up here and teach you Bible study. If you want to know more of me, you just come and get one of my consultation. But what I am here to say to you, yes, you must water it. Meditation, affirmation, even prayer is setting up your environment. If anybody know how to plant, if you know how to plant even a flower or a goat, if you have a little garden or a flower pot, it's the environment you put the soil in first. That soil have to be a good environment. Then you have to nurture it. Then you have to literally water it. Then some plants don't need that much water and then some plants don't need that much sun. Do you understand the environment you're putting it in? You don't take a plant and you just put it somewhere in the sun and it says, read the instruction, it doesn't need but so much sun. You have to know who you are and what it is that you can tolerate. How much can go in your air gate? It is people that can say, hey, listen, I love my rapping and I love the cursing. Let me tell you the best rap songs and you go get those Christian rap songs. A lot of the things, the titles in my book is coming from those rap songs. And I am telling you, you can rap and you can tell it is poetry and let that you can rap about it and it could be a good seed. You can tell a story of a rebellion and an old seed, but bring a solution out. With that being said, you have to control the environment of that plant, of you. And then as the head of the household, you may be like, well, I'm single and I don't have anybody. I don't want anybody. I'm by yourself. Yeah, your house, I'm pretty sure when somebody go in your house, it don't look like a pigsty. You have to clean that environment. If you don't clean out the clutter, and you know what? You might not have those hot headaches that you're suffering because everything is out of order. Your desk is out of order. This is in your home. Your kitchen is upside down. Your bathroom is upside down. And you just go home and you just don't understand why you don't want to be there. Then you walk around and you say, you know what? I just can't. We're going to get into that another time. But let's look at this. A relationship. I just want somebody to love me. But you got to love yourself. And we literally were just speaking of how atheists love themselves. They don't understand. They may say, I don't like the creator. I don't believe in the creator, but they don't have to walk around with a Bible or two. Because guess what? When you believe in yourself, you believe in the creator and you don't even know it. That's why church people got that rebellious seed in them because they limit. They put a ceiling on over God. Having a Bible and starting and putting putting religious quotes on the uh, social media, that ain't going to make God step down and come and say, hey, I got to help you. Let me tell you something. You are a representative of God. Jesus came down to show you an example of who you're supposed to be. You are a representative. You supposed to walk around and people supposed to look at you and see, oh my God, I like her promised land. And then you supposed to help. Your promised land is not, and I keep saying that this is not for you, it's for everyone. But you cannot help. Don't go back and help people who don't want to be helped. Stop knocking and banging on the door of your family and your, I did it your family members and your neighbors. And let me tell you what you need to do. Let me tell you, even a good preacher, 
He can't get everybody coming to his church. Now online, they can get the whole world. But you online. He can't not beg people to come and listen to his sermon. They have to go with their free will. So this is what I'm telling you. You don't need two props. You don't need photo ops. <laughs> All you need to do is you need to go get your promised land. Cultivate your environment. Then go back and feed it. Put a plant out and you don't feed it. What happens? Oh, we was speaking about, I have to get into that, that gluttony spirit. People don't want to know. They ain't got nothing to do. How are you supposed to serve God? How do you supposed to live in your promised land peacefully and honestly? How are you supposed to go forth and help the next generation? How are you supposed to change a community? How are you supposed to change a state? You can't change nothing if you're sick. Now, this have nothing to do with people who say, they said I have a disability. I'm not talking about label because you can't control what somebody else label you, but you can control what you label yourself. Whatever label you have, you got an audience right there that you can go ahead and change the seeds that's going into their air gate. Hello? Do you see what I'm saying? Replace the illusions. Why is it an illusion? Because it's their word against yours. Be careful because your closest people will come and they will drop them seeds. Envy. It could be many reasons. Jealousy. That seed needs to travel. I'm going to leave you with this. I was talking about quotes. People got quotes on. Take, take some of them quotes of, of the Bible down and you don't even know what the Bible is. Some of you didn't even get past chapter one. Oh, my goodness. I wrote my own quotes. Now, I ain't got nothing to do with God quotes. I mean, I'm the best quotes. You can't do that. But I wrote some quotes. It's called poetry. It's, it's expression of what you feel. And one of my quotes by me is distractions are a waste of time. Excuses are a waste of words. What are you setting up? Or should I say manifesting? If you are not taking care of the seeds that's in you or pruning the right, the bad ones out, and then you have to turn around and replace it and take care of it, you're going to manifest one thing and it's excuses. Well, we are here today. Excuse me, I had this drop my book. Thank you for coming to my space. I'm going to say thank you. I am so honored that I am blessed every time you come and listen to me. Now go get your promised land. Please don't forget to share, review on all your social medias. Now here I have to talk about social medias. Yeah, you need to because you need to help people get their promised land as you get yours. And you know what? If you want more dessert, go to Amazon. I'm all over Amazon. My books are on Amazon. My t-shirt on Amazon. And what's new? Well, maybe by the time this one come out, I'll be working on my next book. Someone say, why are you doing the books? Why are you writing so many books? You know why? Because I can do it. I can do it. That's what you need to say the next time somebody get on your nerve. They say, why are you doing this? Why are you going to that school? Why are you trying to make more money? You need to say that uh, because I can do it. What's new is the book called Ask Jalen about a teenager, artistic, 18-year-old who literally is giving advice to the unique. The unique are those who was labeled or are bullied to let them know that they got a promised land too. And remember... His loving yourself is right. You don't want to be wrong.